Waiting for transitions. There we go. Waiting folks. for transition. And Waiting. we're live in three, two. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to Between the Rolls here on Murder Hobo Inc. It is Tuesday. We're going to talk about some talk show stuff. I think I like the tulips better, honestly. Uh, they match better with Heidi over here. Uh, but that's just me. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Goodness. I am back in that mood where I can't keep track of anything that's going on. Oh my gosh, those look like yum yum donuts, and I love yum yum donuts. They are yum yum donuts. Oh my oh, god. <laughs> yeah. I just don't like that my hair disappears. Hair? Ky- yeah, Kyle doesn't have gosh, that problem. That's, that must be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the it same. It's just boat. a few gray hairs. <laughs> no. I couldn't stand to look at them. Uh, so, hey, everybody, before I get totally distracted with mushrooms and donuts, <laughs> let me go through the rigmarole roll real quick. You can find us on Twitch. You can follow us on Twitter. You can take a look at our YouTube archives. Check out a whole bunch of episodes that you have never even seen before. If you want to talk to any of these people on Discord, you can do that. Uh, probably contact us through Gmail at uh, murder hobo inc on twitter uh i got distracted because i went out of order uh if you're interested in buying <laughs> some cool and interesting stuff uh caitlin has an etsy where she hand makes all of our cool and awesome murder hobo uh stuff it's really amazing yeah crocheted little murder hobo icons and things like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No, she does a great job pay extra she'll crochet you a uh, chest mimic that's like murder hobo and an arm comes out and stabs you in the chest it's quite elaborate and the fact that she is able to do that just amazes me every single time uh but that is expensive i think that was what four thousand dollars caitlin me yes (laughs) so if you want to buy you know what i'll crochet someone something special for four thousand dollars Whatever you want, from whatever material you want. (laughs) But if you want the good stuff, you can also just click on the link somewhere around this page here. Uh, If you don't want to look at any of our faces, because honestly, (laughs) honestly, you should really be looking at our faces. Because whenever I say something that involves Caitlin and she just gives that, what? Huh? (laughs) It's worth looking at. But if you can't, There's also a link. You can link there and uh, listen to these during your drive. Uh, Finally, I want to thank Pirate Dog Dice, also known as Dirty Dog Dice, also known as the producer, but not tonight, so I'm allowed to missay the sponsor however I like. Dirty Dog Dice. Dirty Dog Dice. Dirty Dog Dice. Uh, She is currently uh, in the process of making me some dog poop dice, so uh, sorry guys, but uh, I'm going to have the coolest dice around here. And when those dice stink, what do I do? But I reach over and I grab my putrid sewers from Adventure Sense and give it a good whiff. And I can't smell anything for years afterwards. <laughs> I, I think carry up Steve's fiber intake to get your dice made. <laughs> They're That's all natural, think. sustainable, good for right. the environment. I would Plus they put a rubber sure. band in there so it's easier to grab mm-hmm. and just roll. Nice. but guys i think that's all the introductions i had to do i mean other than introduce you people and i didn't think of anything clever so damn it i'm gonna go with the most original person here first hey everybody i'm kyle (laughs) Uh, and here's the rest of the crew scott why don't you introduce yourself tell us where you're from what you play and uh what you do yeah, hi. Um, I'm Scott. I'm a. Um, you can follow me on Twitter and be the third person to follow me on Twitter. Um, He's on Twitter, everybody. Aww, <laughs> yeah, really? no, I mean, Wait, what's your Twitter? It, um, a DM Pooba. I, I think I have maybe maybe five followers. Maybe oh, you know what? Five, I, am I think I lost followers. a couple. Yeah, I, I lost. <laughs> a couple. Oh yeah, you got your dog as your picture. Yeah, yeah, I got my dog as my picture. Yeah, I just hit nope. follow it on you. All right. Oh, wow. That's great. That's going to get me in trouble. So um, his viewers has gone up 300%. There you go. 
<laughs> oh, I just got a notification. Holy shit, you guys aren't. Uh, you guys aren't. Uh... We're not messing around, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, that's that's that's, that's amazing. So uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, been a DM for a long, long time. Uh, I'm also a cast member on our on our calamity show here with Mitter Hobo Inc. And um, I like to talk about D and D, and I like the sound of my own voice. So there you go. That is true. It makes it really easy to host these things when Scott is here. <laughs> and between that, you have Scott, who is just giving that voice. Caitlin, who's busy making sure she looks good. It's the best of <laughs> all worlds. And then David. Oh, oh. God. Oh. <laughs> David does the sigh. David is the shame <laughs> of the show. I am the shame. So if something is like, <laughs> is that something that I should be worried about? Look at David. And if he's like this. Yeah. Yeah. Like the they, they were in trouble. Yeah. I'm, I'm Kyle's trouble. barometer. So basically, <laughs> if he says, you know, anything inflammatory, yeah, you'll see it in my face. So. His, his his smile I'm gets wider and wider and wider. Until right like, now, <laughs> uh, then we know we're in trouble. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, oh man. So uh, am I? Am I up next? Go ahead, yeah. Go ahead and right. take a stab at it, but watch out. <laughs> make sure there's no police officers nearby. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, there's God. my inflammatory. There you go. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. My name is David. I am um, regular here on BTR. I also play in the Calamity campaign and also our drama series Cacophony with that young lady right there, Caitlin. So, uh, I would say follow me on Twitter. Yeah, I got a Twitter, but according to Kyle, it's a train wreck. So, all oh, right. no, 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 your Facebook, your Facebook page is a train wreck. <laughs> Don't mention that. <laughs> is your Twitter essentially the same thing? Pretty much, yeah. Oh, okay. Wait, do I follow I you follow on Twitter, David? Mm -hmm, I think so, yeah. Right? Yeah. What's your name? Dean Devious at Twitter. <laughs> I can't you. But while she's distracted, let's I ask her about Caitlin. You. You're right. So, Caitlin, what about you? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Caitlin. Um, I'm also on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care about that, Caitlin. Skip over that part. Tell us more. Yeah, else. just. Well, okay, it's T Flink Kitten. I don't know why. I was thinking of some old name. T Flink mm -hmm. Kitten. It's me. I play on Cacophony with David, and then I play with Kyle in our Cthulhu game. I don't know if we have a real title for that. Cred. That's what it is. Cred. Cthulhu. Cred. 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 Cthulhu yeah. rises, everybody dies. I spell Cthulhu wrong every single time, so I sit in my phone, I'll be in public, and I'm like, I'm playing Cthulhu, and I'm like, hmm, <laughs> if I'm listening, maybe concerned. <laughs> well, if you pronounce it correctly, it's Cthulhu. <laughs> I was about to say, <laughs> yeah, start doing that. It might come so up. So essentially, just take your tongue, <laughs> shove it out of your mouth, and say, cool. and that, that's about right. Yep, that's right. I, I, actually, I think if you spell it right, that's like a sign of the apocalypse. I think that actually will cause. I think that will summon Cthulhu. Yeah, well, Cthulhu, actually... right? Uh, draw a perfect circle and a perfect line. I don't know. Well, like you just take thing. your arm and just whip it around. I was say, then lick your elbow. I was like, yeah, if you can lick your elbow. That's it. I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Le, le, licked. <laughs> nice. That's where. Oh, man. All right, guys. It's Tuesday. It's between the rolls. We're going to talk about some stuff. We're going to talk about the previous games that we played or did not play, but watched intently and memorized every single moment of those shows. I'm not calling anyone out, Scott. No. Uh, <laughs> and then we'll get on to the topic tonight where we're going to talk about the uh, player races, which, okay, I'm going to get distracted. I'm going to sidetrack real quick. Should it be races or should it be uh, uh, species? Mm. That is a good question. That's, That's a good question. question. Right? Yeah. I mean... Because, I mean, I can understand where it's like, yeah, okay, dwarves and elves, I could see those maybe being the same mm -hmm. species, but then you have a dragonborn and a lizard folk, and it's like, I don't I know where you came from. It would yeah. depend if they could breed together or not, you know? Like, if any of them can reproduce and have 
offspring, then I would consider it races. But yeah. if they can't reproduce together, then I would consider Same it species. a different species. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> no, that, no, that, 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 that sounds, is actually that sounds right. Yeah, that's actually accurate. So. You know what? That's what my wife said, and I called her a dirty whore. <laughs> uh, get back down in the hole. You're wrong. I should maybe apologize for that, but it's been a couple weeks, and I don't know how she's doing. To be She'll honest, forget. Uh, <laughs> She'll forget about folks. it. Don't worry. The All shame right. face, folks. Yeah, shame <laughs> face. Like, ah, uh, uh, don't call the cops on me quite yet. <laughs> Look, Shirley Temple. Animal crackers in my soup. Monkeys and rabbits, we salute. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and while I'm breaking the old folks, let's go to David. Uh, cough. Actually, you know what, David and Caitlin, since you were mm-hmm. both in Cacophony, the soap opera of a campaign, uh, supposedly. Mm-hmm. You know, like soap, it rises to the top and bubbles and frizz, and you get to make a Santa beard after it. Hi, honey. You are, in fact, in the frame. <laughs> nice. Who um, played and what happened? Yeah. So, David, Caitlin, tell us uh, what happened on Kikoff. All right. It was episode 234. I have no idea what the official title of that episode is, but we're just going to call it House Wreckers because that's pretty much what we do. We just, between me, Carrie, and Caitlin, we just go in there and wreck shit. So, I haven't done anything except try to. Uh, kind of so uh basically this episode culminates with us continuing our home inspection for the cloud giants and we just keep triggering stuff left and right uh yeah we found a cute dog in the previous episode turns out there's a little secret about this dog it is um yeah what is it? What is it? What is it? You got to watch the episode, folks. I'm not oh, going to tell on. you. Oh, it, uh, it's a shadow mastiff. So, we, yeah. So, funny episode. Episode opener set off a trap. Uh, a coatl, uh appears. Yeah. Attacks us. Apparently starts strangling the dog. <laughs> and that's when it shifts into shadow mastiff form and just tears it a new one. So... Mm. Between that and what, Caitlin, our antics while uh, looking around uh, in the basement with the... Yeah, we're like last in the basement. We haven't left mm-hmm. the basement yet. That's where we still are. Yeah. We actually <laughs> had to go back down in the basement. Imagine trying a human-sized basement, trying to get a cloud giant down there. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. So <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, it culminates with us... Uh, with us thinking we finished the inspection, we go back. Uh, the giants want to see what some of the issues that we brought up. And their staff. Mm-hmm. They're then we, their staff is. We, then we find out that the staff is missing. So that's how our next episode kicks off, folks. <gasps> so we got to, um, yeah, we got to go. Someone find through. Tim Curry, the butler. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So. But yeah, between that and you know, ten golems and stuff like that, yeah, it's it's crazy. So Frank always pulls out the stops with us. Ten golems or ten golems? Ten and ten. Ten. So okay. Yep. Yeah. So. All right. Anyway, so can you think of anything That's else, cool. Caitlin? The mushrooms have gone to her head. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, in cacophony elementals make up the the HVAC system. So yeah, there you go. We're not supposed to say that's what it is yet. I thought that I thought we did. No, we found out after the show ended. Mm, That's true. Well, there you go, folks. First spoiler. (laughs) Moral of the story: Don't tell David surprises. No, I I didn't think that was a surprise. I thought that was self evident, but never mind. Anyway, yeah, we sat there being like, "What is this wind gust? What is this elemental that's in here? <laughs> well, the noise? They must. We think the people are behind the door because we hear this noise." <laughs> yeah, and then all this. Yeah, or the knock three times thing. I don't know if you got that Tony Orlando and Don reference, but anyway, that was it. <laughs> 
Uh, so yeah, yeah, mysterious knocking uh, through these chamber doors in the basement. So and none of us is perceptive enough to realize where we are. <laughs> nope, nope. So. Yeah. So that's it, folks. Check out the episode. Yeah, you got a little bit of a spoiler, but hey, I'll just make you come back for more. So there you go. We got you. So no, I always thought it was weird when you would like look at mythology and you'd see like the wind gods Boreas and he'd be going. <gasps> exactly. I don't know if you've ever, you know, had someone breathe in your face like that, but it's kind of gross. I can't <laughs> imagine an elemental and an HVAC system would be really pleasant, honestly. <laughs> That's, I suppose it might smell like ozone, uh, but probably dog, would. Dog breath, <laughs> dog hair. Everything under the sun. All right. Well, that leads us to our one shot, our once bi weekly, but not tri weekly or bi monthly. I don't know. It's one of those, but, uh, None of us here on this show were in that one, but Scott, keeping I'm, an eye out through the binoculars, yeah. through the window shields. Mm -hmm. He glanced, he watched. Uh, yeah, they were at Roy like Jack Caitlin's Chris. neighbor. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, and I, uh, I um, um, got in on chat and watched, uh, watched the episode, and uh, it was good because I got in chat as um, at as playing as one of my characters that I play. So I got in chat and typed in the chat as if I was air called justice man. So I intentionally made all of my R's W's and, you know, talked and typed as if I, you know, had a hair lip. Um, so that was, that was kind of funny, but, um, and I was just trying to of course, you know, just distract the players and, and, and to be a, be a pest basically. But that, that was all fun. Tell them to set things on fire. Yeah. You know, Tell them to the, set things on fire. Go ahead. Uh -huh. And it, it was, uh, it, it was a pretty straight dungeon crawl. I would, I guess is the, I guess is one way you would say it, you know? Um, and they, uh, they kind of got forced into some crypts. They had to find a way to navigate through them. Um, there were some surprise things where they had some envelopes they could open up and then either good things or bad things can happen from that point. Um, the magic user, the, um, you know, wizard, uh, opened one up and he, his mouth disappeared. So he couldn't cast spells. Maybe he was a warlock. He was a spell cast. I think, yeah, cause he was doing Eldritch Blatch, uh, Blast. And then, um, I think, uh, Carol, her character, um, who was a paladin, um, opened up one and had to talk like Foghorn Leghorn, and, which was really funny to hear, um, um, Carol. Bostonian. <laughs> right. And that, that, you know, I, I, I can't even imitate it if I tried, and I'm pretty good at doing imitations. I was oh, thinking, man. you know, um, you know, Foghorn Leghorn's a great Southern character, and if you have a Southern draw, it was a Boston it accent. Yeah. Oh my god! But with the Boston <laughs> accent, it was um, it was it, it was interesting. It really was. Uh, and then they had to fight some interesting creatures. Uh, you know, fairly bad stuff. Um, they were kicking around some things. They awoke a poltergeist. Uh, they had, uh, there were a lot of traps, a lot of traps, but they were able to navigate those fairly successfully. They made it through. No one died. Uh, and I think everyone had a lot of fun. Uh, so it was, uh, it was a good examination on how to use traps and how to use, um, props inside a game in order to, in order to change the effect of how a one shot is. So I actually, as a, as a viewer, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Actually, I did. You're always the nicest one on here, Scott. <laughs> Clearly, Carol goes over the top, and you can't believe a word she says, but <laughs> Scott says something. <laughs> yeah, there's some thought behind it, son of a bitch. Oh. All right. <laughs> All right, and that finally leads us to Caitlin. What happened, that cred episode you missed on Thursday last, last week? I didn't think. I said I was going to watch the video. I didn't say I did yet. <laughs> uh -huh. We'll see Going you in a couple to of and days. have watched are two different things. <laughs> All right. Well, after Saturday on Sunday, we had the usual tri-generational Frank game. You guys and... are trying to kill my bodyguard. That's all I heard. No. No, I just doing that. It's no fine. one else is. <laughs> <laughs> The tri-generational Frank game, and to be frank, it was it was its usual Margui 
itself where they ended up dancing with spiders and skinhead Nazi priests and uh-huh. and they're clearing out the corpus keep and uh, I think there's going to be a show with the Nazis and I even heard now this is between me and uh, you guys here so everyone who's watching this turn it off go somewhere else for a while <laughs> I hear there's going to be a Jew bear that is going to be roaming in the keep. It's a stuffed bear that comes to life and kills Nazi priests. It's uh, with a baseball bat. No? No? (laughs) (laughs) And glorious bastards. uh, I've never heard of it. No idea what you're talking about, Mm -hmm. but I could use a Danish and some freshly whipped cream right now. (laughs) Nice. All right. And that was the last year's shows. Uh, this week we've got last year's shows. Last yeah, year. we really. Yeah, where are you going, wow. boy? We went way back, guys. Uh, I thought I was ready to come back and host the show. Clearly, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> certainly, if you want to watch something entertaining, come and watch Thursday Cred Campaign. Or if you want to see a really uh, rock show. Uh, Saturday is the Calamity Campaign <laughs> with uh, David and Scott. Literal rocks, oh, yeah. though. I don't mean they rock because that <laughs> they're a bunch of old guys. Come on. Yeah, yeah, we light rock. There we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, watch. No, watch the age guys. doesn't discriminate. No, more like yacht rock. You know, that's but that's the type I do. Of yacht that's that it. In. That's yeah. the type of rock I'm in. Yeah, yeah that one there. Yeah, uh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> no, all right. No Chuck Mangione, you know, kind of thing going on. <laughs> Ready to light rock, folks? <laughs> All right. Not to discriminate against you old people, but let's move <laughs> on to our topic. And what better way than to segue with discrimination? Let's talk about player races, everybody. Or, or species. In this case, we're going with race. Wait, no, I suppose I can't. See, I assume all of the races in TNT could have babies together. Like, you could be a half, whatever, quarter something. So we know who watched the Monster Girls show. I think think (laughs) you can... I, I think at one point they did have, like, a half dragonborn, right? I mean, Kaliana in um, um, Critical Role, uh, Mark Mark Holmes's uh, character is like half dragonborn, literally. So I don't know. I thought that was because she was. Uh, uh, I thought she dragon. was cursed or something like that. I don't know. Uh, 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 she was a dragon sorcerer. Okay. And so she was like, "Yeah, I'm part dragon." I don't think it went like that, but okay. <laughs> I'm part dragon. <laughs> Sorry, British. I'm poor dragon. Pinky's out. Where's my tea and crumpets? We're gonna Perfect. we're gonna get a sternly written email yes. from Mark sternly Jones. <laughs> and you know what? I it's gonna go right into the spam basket because I don't <laughs> read that. Nice. All right, but guys, we're gonna talk tonight about the races, specifically in this one, Tiefling and variant <laughs> humans. Oh, that's next time, Caitlin. You're going to host. You You blinked are the best! (laughs) Oh, but for the uh, next couple of shows... We We don't have Azimars on here? Uh, That's the rest of the bunch. Frank's never actually read the book, so he doesn't know No, no. actually in 5th edition, and... 3.5 3.5 had too many races for him, too. He he knows his second edition. Though. We we can cover it. Don't worry. We'll yeah. throw Asimov in there, too. So. Could anyone... Ufajanazi? I don't know if you could, like, have sex with them. I don't think they have any of that stuff. You know what? There are... Kanazi, yeah. Uh, essentially, you take a cantaloupe I don't think it's from so hard the plane of now. earth and water, and you drill a hole Oh my god. Warm god. it up in the place <laughs> of fire. I can barely tell the difference. <laughs> oh Six man. Weeks later, you get That's either a water, fire, or earth genasi. Wow. Nice. <laughs> nice, Kyle. <laughs> you don't want to know how the wind ones are made. I, just, I, just don't know I haven't seen know. enough prison movies. Oh man. <laughs> 
<laughs> we have we have jumped off the rails in a hurry. Uh, <laughs> we did. You know what? We got the first part of the show pretty quickly, though. So, Caitlin, <laughs> Caitlin lo- logged into Genasi porn on Pornhub. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to make some Genasi porn with me? I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. All right. So let's kick this off, Kyle. What's our first that we're covering tonight? Well, let's talk about humans in general. I mean, uh, over the next couple of weeks, we'll talk about the other races. Uh, mm-hmm. Probably lump a few of them together. That way, you don't get too bored just talking about races. Yeah, tonight, like what's though, the difference between a dwarf gnome and halfling? They're all the same. Yeah. Well, if you're, what? if you excuse me, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Um, oh. actually, you just lump them together and you become one giant person. So it's fine. That's kobolds. That's kobolds, you freak. <laughs> Go back to your typing with your thumbs on Twitter and tweet bullshit. Um, typing, all right. On. Tonight, we're going to talk about the most important of all the races that no one ever chooses humans. And because it's the Caitlin, why are we having. You're the con. I, I yep, okay, never mind. I know what Caitlin's here for. Mm-hmm. So uh we're playing a fantasy game, guys. Why is anyone picking human? And I will send this over to mm-hmm. Scott because he's going to give me a very well worded answer. Mm-hmm. Very thoughtful. I'm sure he's only thought about it once or twice though. Why be human? Actually, actually, I wrote a uh, thesis on this in college. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't do anything like that whatsoever. <laughs> Titled "You're Only Human." There we go. <laughs> You're only human. That's right. And why I play D and D. No, it's uh, it, it's it's actually a really really interesting question because whenever I started playing um, <clears throat> way back in here, where, where's my? I can't see here. Yeah, there, oh, we go. there you go. <laughs> there you go. Our first edition player's handbook. I kept that in case we needed reference for any of the uh, you know original races. And to uh, to your point, Carl, about how uh, how D and D did kind of institutionalize a little bit of class hatred, sorry, race hatred, because you actually had racial preference tables. Uh-huh. And what a human was was it was the one that basically was the middle ground for everything that no one eventually you know initially hated or did not have some type of racial animosity towards. Um, It was the uh, bread and butter, plain vanilla um, option that you could choose that was supposed to represent the majority of of the population. And the way it started off at, all of the other races actually had class limits at level limits at certain classes, right? Mm-hmm. So dwarves could only get up to be a ninth level fighter. Elves could only get up to be like a 11th level magic user. So you had mixes of where you could have a maximum level, depending upon your class, depending upon your race. There was no such restriction with humans. So humans were the one class where you could go to max level in any, sorry, one race, we can go to max level in any class. And that just kind of stuck with it, right? Um, so you would have certain people that would want to come in and do that. Of course, now with fifth edition, that's all out the window, right? I mean, th- there's no such restrictions like that. So to your point, Kyle, why would you choose to play a human right now? I have no idea. I was expecting logic <clears throat> and reasoning, and I didn't. I, well, I got it, but I didn't. You got know. it. <laughs> yeah. What? Someone, someone said the reason why they choose human is because, yeah, they play human every day, but when it's in the game, they can play a different type of human than who they are themselves. So if they want to be like, oh, what if my life is more like this or whatever? So I'm like, I guess I kind of get that. Well, I, I mean, I actually kind of get it, and and I was being a little bit tongue, in, I was being a little bit tongue in cheek there, saying, you know, I have no idea. The, the, the point is, is that, you know, it's even in the bonuses that you have there, it's just plus one all the way across. Mm-hmm. Right. So it, it doesn't favor anything. It's intentionally supposed to be as vanilla as you possibly can get just, you know, straight across the board, plus one, everything there. There's no no weighting towards intelligence. So there's not supposed to be a, not supposed to be you know, building in a, building in a class preference inside the human race. Um, 
I can think of a couple of logical reasons as to why you would want to play a human um, in, in, in fifth edition. And that's if, if you wanted to run a very class specific character. When I say a class specific character, um, I mean one that you, that you kind of wanted to, I almost want to almost say it's almost like a Minecraft challenge to see if you can do it. Uh-huh. You know, d- just to say, I'm going to try to get something where I don't play into any of the, you know, tropes. I don't play into any of the stereotypes. I'm not going to be an elf wizard. I'm not going to be a dragonborn paladin. I'm not going to be a gnome illusionist. I'm not going to, you know, a dwarven fighter, right? I'm not, I'm going to reject the, the, uh, the, uh, you know, stereotypical tropes. And instead I'm going to play it straight and narrow right down the middle and, and, and see how I can do that. And that, that I guess would be almost like a challenge to see how you would do it. And instead all your bonuses come from how you role play the character and how you choose and build your class. That would be the one reason I would say as to why a logical reason, sort of logical as to why you would choose to play a human. There's, are, are you, are you happy now, Kyle? No, I have been challenged. <laughs> I accept. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah. Go David. Go. Mm-mm. No, I mean, it, I, I think one of the things that from a role playing standpoint, uh, one of the reasons somebody would want to play um, a human is because the whole, you know, kind of diplomacy issue and stuff like that. You know, humans tend to be more accepted than a lot of the other races around there. It's also humans, I, I think, in, in the, the lore are one of the newer races, basically, right? I think. And Forgotten Realms? Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like as compared to dwarves, I know, elves. I'm trying to think like about that. that. You and, might be right, but I think the other issue is that all the humans went and did something else and then they got turned into like uh, yeah. shadow people and that. So humans right. have been around a while, but they... They just have the ability to kind of change based on their location. Sure. Maybe a little bit better than, uh, eh, I guess elves kind of fill that role too, though. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. No, well, that's. Well, the only, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, one reason that I can think of, and that goes into the, the variant human is, mm. and that's mostly for your min maxers. <laughs> Right. So, I mean, that's the way that I see it. But with fifth edition, with the new stuff that's coming out now, I mean, with, um, oh, uh, what they call the, um, uh, where you can customize your legacy and stuff like that, you know, you can pick, pick and choose, you know, pretty much your traits and stuff like that. So, you know, it's almost like they're, because like, for example, for a min maxer, People wanted to take the variant hu- human mostly to get the feet right off, right, right off the bat, level one, boom, you get a feet. Mm-hmm. So, so, and it seems like Wizards of the Coast are trying to spread that out a little bit to where, you know, you're not going to lock in on a particular race ah. just because of the, uh, oh, <laughs> because of, you know, the variant trait of getting that feat first, Um, you know, with the custom lineage and stuff like that, you can choose to take a feat over dark vision or something like that. So, or proficiency over dark vision or something. Uh, Everyone watching this, do not give up dark vision. It's dark vision and decks all the way. Get those two things and you're set for any campaign. Exactly. You walk into a dark cave. I have dark vision. (laughs) <laughs> exactly i can't tell you i create i like compulsively create characters and you know for one shots and things like that so dark vision is definitely something that i always consider and it's just like okay what what races have dark vision so yeah so but now with custom lineage you know you can you can have it so pick any any race get that feat and get the devil sight uh, from, and you're good to go. You're all set. Yeah, yeah. So especially, Mid-backs. especially if you have a 
player in your party that yeah habitually casts darkness. <laughs> so, <laughs> Caitlin. What? I don't think it's no. Caitlin. It's I think not it's... Caitlin. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's the moon. <laughs> no, Carrie's the stuff. Cloud. No, I think I think you like inked us before with darkness uh, in a tavern or something like that before. I remember there was something, and yeah. Anyway, that's what? an ep- that's an episode of Cacophony, folks, to check out. So. <laughs> that's right. If you want to watch that episode of Cacophony, head over to our YouTube archives. You can check out episode one fifty nine. There you go. <laughs> that seems like an arbitrary number. Why it is you say actually forty two or sixty nine. Or even 86. Because I'm not one of those weird people who like numbers, like those nerds. That's true. (laughs) I feel like 86 could be a hot number. You would think, but... Nah, it makes sense. (laughs) I can... (laughs) Okay, Okay. yeah, no, I'm going to go down a terrible road. Okay. (laughs) That was my diatribe on on humans. So anyway. no, that's fine. And um, no, you raised an interesting point, which I kind of want to go into. Uh, uh, I know, Caitlin, do you DM or no? Um, yeah, she has. I, yeah, I have. Yes. I did. I would like to do it more, but I really miss it, like in person. That's how I used to DM. So I did, like, I don't know. The Blue Rose, a few guys, even though mm-hmm. I really don't know the system. <laughs> Nobody knew, so we were all on our own. <laughs> so. And I tried to watch videos on it, and I mean, I'm sorry. I can't sit there and listen to four hours when I just want to know how to play the game. I don't want to watch them play. I'm like, I just want to know how to play. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. So, so, humans, popular race, they're everywhere. They're like rats on a barge. Mm-hmm. Um, do not discredit rats they're a beautiful creature I learned so much about them too. they're so they smart I can't it. Squeeze a lime. wait did you know rats can actually use tools like I'm so mind blown and they're yet they still the end up on a stick in every single one shot that Frank runs yeah. also available on YouTube archives uh, uh, but no <laughs> you're welcome Scott <laughs> <laughs> but Mm-mm. humans they're the they're the rats they're the pests they're the parasite and they infect the world in any world they happen to be in don't give me that shame face David. <laughs> you know <laughs> i'm, I'm right there, yeah, it's the yeah. reason why the world typically ends in any sort of fashion there's a human behind it somewhere it's true <laughs> or what once was a human mm-hmm. um do you guys run your worlds with the idea that humans are the most populous uh, 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 race out there? Um, no. I mean, considering when, you know, whenever we see someone playing D&D, there's almost no humans in any D&D party. And it makes you think, man, is it, do humans just, what's wrong with them? <laughs> and how are there so many of them? Honestly, when I run games as DM, I never make any of my NPCs humans. <laughs> I've come to realize that they never are. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Anything but. Scott, what are your thoughts on this? So in the in the one campaign I'm running um, right now, it's set in Greyhawk, and actually everyone is, it's very much of a human-centered and, and human centric, almost everyone is uh, is human, and the vast majority of the NPCs they run into are all human as well, and that's just because they're in a they're in a human area. Um, I'm I'm following the source books fairly fairly closely. Uh, they're in Perrinland and Ket, and then the you know Southern Util Mountains, and then they're just now getting into the area to where you're getting into because elves are in kingdoms. You have an elven kingdom here and you have an elven kingdom there. And the only elves that you'll really see are going to be, you know, ones that, that left the, uh, these enclaves for whatever reason. Um, and uh, of that, there's only one real race that's known to do that. And that's, you know, the high elves. 
Uh, the gray elves are all kind of in their own thing. The valley elves are all in their own thing. And so it, when you're following lore and you're running a very lore specific campaign and you're honoring that, <clears throat> I end up with a, I end up with a lot of humans. Yeah, I actually do. Uh, for oh. some, for some weird reason, I ended up DMing for this one campaign for the past four years. We've been running it now and mm -hmm. it's almost all humans. All right. And they have fun, believe it or not. I'm I'm surprised. The humans have fun, or your players have fun. <laughs> no, Which surprises I, I, oh, you? Yeah, I, I I both both yeah yeah yeah. But we're not on Twitch. We're not on Twitter. We're not on anything. We just you know we're on we just play. But we're you know what? They do anything. have adventure sense. They do. Have or at least Scott sense, does. I do. I do. <laughs> That's true. That is true. That's but true. no. Yeah, it's it's. I run them. I run them, and uh, and a lot of my NPCs are are human too. But a lot of my villains are 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 demi humans or are humanoid. A lot of my villains are. I, okay. I end up doing that. I end, I like doing evil gnomes. That's my favorite. Oh, evil gnomes are the best. Evil gnomes, yes. <laughs> Especially when they start off as a good gnome, but then they're so tiny they get abused that they turn yeah. to devils and demons to start gathering power, and then they just become really yeah, twisted really bad horrible abominations double thibbit <laughs> no, whoa, whoa 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 just kidding <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah at this point yes he's summoning demons uh yes. anyway <laughs> david you run for a bunch of kids mm -hmm. you find yourself skipping over human npcs to make something a little bit more interesting fantastical uh, for the kids or is it something where they can relate to the human shopkeep a little bit more and do they the kids themselves be human or not um one of the things that the the kids gravitated towards um was dwarves i mean they they loved playing dwarves uh, we were running uh uh well a campaign uh based in the underdark uh we were doing out of the abyss and uh we had retaken gauntelgrim and you know the kids were just all in on that. They loved it. They loved playing dwarves. These kids were Tolkien fans. They they liked they they loved the Hobbit. So they, we pretty much had, had you know Oak and Shield and company. You know pretty much. So, but oh yeah, all so right. The kids loved it though. But they 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 themselves gravitated towards dwarves. I, I had no. Had no idea why. I think one went elf, but that was it. So, Ooh. yeah, no, we'll talk about that when we we'll get talk to about that. And elves <laughs> later time. Make sure to watch next Tuesday. I will I join why. whenever you guys talk about tieflings and rant on about how they're the best. Well, we'll talk about tieflings and Asimar in the same one since you have experience in both of them. Mm -hmm. She forgot she was an Asimar. I know <laughs> she I'm did. It's just like what? <laughs> She's like what? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's right. Wings and yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess can't tieflings get wings technically? Or they you have can. to like no. ice. There, there, there's a variant that that gets right. It. Yeah. Yeah. There's a variant for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a variant for humans, and we've already talked about that. And I'm going to pretend this is a segue, but it's really not. I'm just yeah. taking the word variant and being like, let's get back on topic, guys. Mm. Variant humans. Yeah. So are they really for the min-maxers, or are they for players who just need a little bit something more to help build their characters? So let's take, for example, Jub Jub, the barbarian who is a variant human where he picks up a feat so he can uh, add to his story at the very beginning where he ate a slime and now has an overwhelming hunger to devour everything in his path. Mm -hmm. so what do you think, Scott? Uh, or create the better backstory? You know, I, I'm, I'm going to have to go with, um, I have no idea. 
on this one. And, and, and I've said that twice now. And so that's, that's, that's terrible for me. What are yeah. you doing to me, Scott? Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm, it's, <laughs> it's the thing is that I've never played a variant human and I saw it in the, like the D and D beyond and things like that. And I thought it was just like a mistake. I thought it was like a typo. <laughs> Seriously. I did. I was just like, it's like, what, what, what is this? What and is I this? Thought, okay. You're trading all the bonuses for a feat. Okay. Pretty much. That's what it is. All right. So, and then, and then, then, so I'm going to say, given that it would, if you want to have a more involved backstory as an excuse to try to min max your character. <laughs> 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 right. Dang it, you found me out, Scott. <laughs> so, so basically if you're trying to get away with getting the first level feet and you want to, couch it in the idea of oh i'm just one a more interesting character ah very inhuman um <laughs> then uh then yeah go for it but um you know it, it's it's just one of those things i suppose to where it works out if you have a specific plan in mind about how you want to run your human and and it makes sense frankly because if you're going to have a feat um it's the same thing uh at, at first level it's the same thing as having a very involved you know um, what like background you will like acolyte or charlatan or something like that where you pick a few uh, you know uh, where you pick a few skills and proficiencies and things like that so there's nothing really wrong with trying to you know customize your character to fit a backstory but you know as a dm i, I kind of just have this like type of aversion to min maxing because you know it's like you're setting out to break the game and I know don't all the min maxers, please don't get all mad at me and I'll, I'll lose, you know, one of the four followers. The that have that <laughs> so, That's right. Yeah, I'm unfollowing yeah, right you now. right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, uh, that it's, it's called me out on my min maxing you son of a bitch. No. So, uh, it's just one of these things to where, um, I think there's a place for it, but since, I, I just don't do it and I haven't done it in the past and I tend to DM a lot more than play. Um, it, it's, it's not something that I've really been able to get my head around. That's all. Uh, Jim Davis came up with a good idea on web DM. Uh, he basically said one of the things that, you know, he, he noticed is that his players were not. Did you see him web I just missed it. <laughs> The DM. <laughs> I swear I heard blah, blah, blah on WebMD. So. No, DM. Anyway. Um, they have this new series serious, on d and yeah. and it's great. Yeah. Yeah. You can Google anything. They'll tell you what kind of condition you're getting or something like that. That'd be amazing. What Are you unable to move? Is every attack against you That's a critical, critical hit? hit? You're paralyzed. <laughs> exactly. That would be awesome, actually. That, that would be awesome. awesome. <laughs> Oh, Bunch of hypochondriac player characters that get on <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Just going, what do I have? Oh it's my either, god! Oh it's my either god. I'm paralyzed or I have I have Crohn's disease. <laughs> oh man! It appears your DM has homebrewed a brand new condition. <laughs> ask him. Yeah, ask him. Uh, no, what I was saying Sorry. about Jim Davis, one of the things that he did since players weren't choosing different races and stuff like that, the mimaxers in his party were all going for the variant human. He's just said, okay, pick whatever you want. Everybody gets a trait, uh, um, a feat at, at level one. So mm. you'll, everybody starts with a feat at level one. That was like his, his table rule. And uh mm. You know, he said it kind of helps curtail that. You know, people started making more interesting character choices and things like that. So, I mean, not that a variant human isn't interesting. It's just, you know, they just wanted to see a little more at the table. So, but anyway, that's that's one of the things that I saw how to get around that. So, make sure everyone at the table is power game i mean yeah if they're all going to power game then you know what mm -hmm. let them power Why game, not? right and maybe they'll pick something interesting or pick a lame feat like um mm -hmm. linguist yeah. right like yeah. languages is that what it is 
Mm-hmm. That's yeah, like language. so essential. Why do you need? You three need languages? all the languages. Like speaking all the languages makes you the most valuable person because you'll be able to read or speak or talk anyone. Comprehend languages. I'm Co- done with you. Comprehend That's languages still- and tongues. There you go, Faxon. And tongues. There you go. Mm-hmm. So anyway, <laughs> I think those should be feats in themselves or something like that. They should have like the polyglot feat, you know, where, you know, you pretty much have, you know, uh, just unlimited access to comprehend languages and stuff like that. So I don't know. Like the warlock? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, no. Gosh, that's a pain in my butt, the fact that Ernie has that, <laughs> and then I have to actually make up stuff, and it has to have some oh, sort yeah. of reason. All right, Caitlin, you have been on Twitter nonstop, I... texting about I'm... your cat and uh, dark, evil <laughs> thoughts about disappearing on your I weekly runs. Why don't we talk about the show, I... Caitlin? I know it's not been teachers. on Instagram. Very. What's humans? your opinion on variant humans, Caitlin? <clears throat> Come on, tell us. I don't know. I just they're the same. She doesn't them. play them. She doesn't play yeah, them. She exactly. goes straight for like, tiefling. I. All right. All right. I quickly guys, Google guys, variant a human. It would make a variant so you know. human more like a tiefling. It says variant humans are a terrible addition to the game and that they are too good. A feat <laughs> at first level while still getting access to 16 attribute, whatever, trumps anything any other race can bring to the table. That's what my Google search has brought me to. I'm sure. <laughs> yep. And then it has playing the human race is the second best race to play after half elf, which is half human, half elf. So apparently humans are just. Yeah, half, um, half, no, half, half, half elves are one of those races too that min maxers love the most. Yeah, so. half elves are. Yeah. Yeah. So to, to tell us this, <coughs> why why is a tiefling better than a very human? Yeah. Oh, bam. Ooh, there you bam. go. Bam. Come Do on, it. Caitlin. Do yeah. it. Don't look at my glowy hands. Just tell us why. Spotlight right on you. First of all, aesthetics. <laughs> Let's be real. That's true. Horns and a tail. <laughs> Plus, I don't know. I'm sorry that my uh, what is it? Hellish rebuke is just the best. That is, it's a pretty oh. powerful trait. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. never can. Oh, that. come on now. You can get uh, and Hellish you get to rebuke. have a sexy tail. Oh, humans don't have tails, it's so mm. sad. Even in real life, I would gladly love to have a tail. What humans have <laughs> tails in real life now, Caitlin? I saw shallow. Yeah, hat. there you go. Little, uh, George Costanza had, had a, tail. a vestigial tail. There we go. They're like little little things. I want like a long tail. Are you saying that English bulldogs are inferior because they have little bulb tails? Yeah. Wow. Wow, boy, wow. gauntlet thrown. Gauntlet thrown. If you want to uh, tear <laughs> Caitlin apart, you can find her on Twitter at, at Tiefling Kitten. Or something, I think. I honestly don't remember. The English Bulldog Humane Society is going to be giving you a call. <laughs> what? Honestly, all of those dogs that have those like smush faces too just shouldn't be bred. I'm like, you're literally breeding breeds that can't breathe. <laughs> like, why are you setting a dog up for failure? Okay. <clears throat> I don't know if they can spin Put French some straws up its nose. It'll be fine for the no, rest of the and like. French bulldogs, they can't even swim. So if you put them in the water, they just drown. I don't know if you know this, Caitlin, but most, most of the dogs US can. is not in the water. <laughs> it's true. Right? Most of the U.S. is not near water. Oh. Surprisingly enough. Yeah, but if there's like a lake or a river or something. Okay. What's that? So now we're on animal husbandry, folks. So. Animal husbandry. Yeah. Yeah. And how I guess if you play a human, you can have a pet. That's where I'm getting at. I don't yeah, know. Okay. Uh, what about tieflings? What about the infernal legacies and stuff like that? Do you ever make choices based on that? Because each legacy gets different stats and stuff like that. They're worse than variant humans. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what, me? I don't think I've actually looked too far into that. But I have been playing everything <laughs> online, so I just do whatever resources I have there. 
Tiefling is yet another race that min-maxers yeah. love because of infernal legacies and stuff like that. So, you know, each... Uh, e and aesthetics. aesthetics. There you go. Can't forget the, you know, horns, tail, fangs. Can't, mm -mm, can't pass that up. Sign me up. So <laughs> Tiefling would be my second character I ever played. My first one was a moon elf. A moon elf. elf. Okay. Because mm -hmm. aesthetics. Yeah, okay. Uh, I get it. I get moon elf, yeah, yeah. Moon elf so, paladin. Have you have you always played 5e? Yeah, yeah. Have I haven't gotten 5e? into it until, yeah, yeah. yeah. four years ago now, I guess I started playing. Okay, okay. I, I just want to know what, 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 like, you know, like your frame of reference. Yeah, I'm silently Harshly. judging. Yeah, no, exactly. it's fine. Like, I... Oh, she picked Moon Elf because she's a WoW fan, <laughs> not a true D and D nerd. I didn't play WoW until a year ago for the very first time. There we go. The and wow and Kyle yeah. knows that because he's Facebook stalking you. There you go. He went back in your history and saw your WoW. David, post. I'm too busy looking at your <laughs> Facebook posts. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh man, really interesting. I played RuneScape, yeah. but that's all human. See, human race. Yeah. That's the only option you have on there for a game. Yeah. yeah. So, God, we're so off topic tonight. We are really off topic today. I blame. Eeny, well, eeny. how is the human? Well, we went over the human race in the other editions. I don't know. I only know 5e. E. I was yep. told 4e e isn't that. See this great. outline? We're right here. <laughs> so. <laughs> Well, and then we went down here, and then we came back I up know, here. I know, we went down a bit, and I got really confused, because we call, talked about min-max favorites and things, yeah. and a married human. Well, and but then I we could it... talk about plain old humans, and how uh, typically, whenever they're presented in any sort of game, they're more uh, uh, as the most adaptive, the most adventurous race, the most productive, it seems like to me, because in first or in original D D, they could do anything right. um if you look at they started small they have spread out crazily elves stay in their kingdoms dwarves stay in their mountains typically mm -hmm. while humans are just out roaming around with the orcs and dancing around um i mean if you look at modern day modern day i mean older than D D, i guess uh, 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 comic books. We have the Marvel Universe where humans are one of the most powerful beings there because their DNA can just change and adapt in certain ways. You get bit by a radio spider, you don't get cancer, you get spider powers. <laughs> Breathe in the Terrigen Mist, you become an inhuman. So on and so forth. And it seems very much like uh, I don't know, is it... Is it like subliminal messaging trying to say like oh humans in real life like we gotta realize how great we are how powerful we are or <laughs> i mean the gods are great because... but until you know zeus has sex with uh hercules mom uh uh or yeah no then you get a real hero like hercules because yeah. he's part human yeah i never really understood that because zeus came down and disguised himself as a as a bull or an ant, one of those times. Uh, as a bull, as and then apparently Hercules' mom was like, oh, I gotta go get me some of that. Uh, sir, you have not been to Tijuana, I can tell. Tell. <laughs> you need to make okay. a trip, sir. <laughs> Actually, I have been to Tijuana, but um, um, under very, very different circumstances. If you worked for the government, Donkeys yeah, and bulls, been to two Tijuana. different things. Right, I right, exactly, okay. exactly, thank you. No, it's, I, I think to, uh, to, to uh, get to your point, Caitlin, I think there were supposed to be some type of overarching themes that were going on about how the uh, how the humans were supposed to be played, um, and and they were kind of viewed as in some races as being the middle ground, and others as being invaders, as some as being um, almost like a virus, um, and then it, it, so so it was the ability to be able to come in and and play the middle ground to play the uh, and to give lots of options for role play. Now I think that that five E has kind of gotten away from that and drawn the uh, these very interesting characters now that didn't you know I, I read about what they're doing all you know the Genesee and the Shatterkai and the all the different types of elves that you have and of course you know your Dragonborn and your Tieflings as well. 
Mm -hmm. um, they're player versions of what used to be like, you know, half dragons or cambians or ways that you could find, find, find ways to, to be very inventive and very creative with your characters. And I think the tiefling may probably be one of the most, it, it may represent the apotheosis of that, of that ideal to try mm -hmm. to make someone that is very aesthetically pleasing at the same time, very powerful and, and, you know, very approachable to, to a lot of different people that want to not only look like a, uh, or, or sorry, to, to be like a fantastical, you know, magical, powerful creature, but to also look like one as well. There's no if, ands, about when you see a tiefling, you know, they're a tiefling, right? You know, th there's still ways that you can kind of hide your ancestry. If you're, if you're a half elf, you can kind of hide your ears. We've all seen, you know, that people trying to pass as a different race, you know, by disguising themselves in some way. Well, that's really hard to do when you got big freaking horns and a tail, right? Yeah. So, you know, right. there, there's, there, there's, uh, th there's some things to be said about, about how 5e has kind of blown the doors off of, uh, off of a lot of those tropes. And, and the tiefling is most certainly one of those that, is, that, that has done that, mm -hmm. All in right. my opinion. Hey, no. Wait, can it's... I just go on? Can oh you see gosh. what I commented? It says tieflings can come from either tiefling or human parents. Uh -huh. <gasps> that makes it's them true. the real variant human at the end of the day. <laughs> Who knew? That's a good way of thinking. <laughs> All right, guys, we are going to end the show. We went long, but that's because uh, Scott said I hypothesis thought. and and whenever he speaks like this, hypothesis. There you go. Even better. I just, I just dribble just brain out of my ear, and I'm just like, oh, okay, you can keep talking, Scott. <laughs> All right, we'll go around the table one last time. I'm going to ask you, make me a variant human character. Give me a class. Give me the feet. And uh, tell me what it's all about. And I'm going to start with our biggest, second biggest power gamer, David. Come first. Human paladin, man. Human paladin. <laughs> What's the feat? Uh, the feat. Oh, let's see. Uh, great weapon. Really... Great weapon master. Great, great weapon master at first level. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Going to have a zero to hit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, but yeah, no, no. Uh, it, it's so funny because, uh, yeah. My friends tease me. It's just like, I don't see why you play these other characters, Dave. I mean, morally, you're a human paladin. So it's like, oh, well. So Sometimes I like to be evil, man. All right. Yeah. Caitlin, you looked up the feats, right? What's your uh, variant human uh, character? What? I looked up the feats? I haven't looked up the feats. What did I just ask you? I said I'd go around the table asking no. each of you what your variant... <laughs> Pull up the fe the feats oh page. There gosh. you go. All right. You hear me typing? typing I'm typing, going typing, typing, to typing. vamp a little bit. Da 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 da. Let everybody look <laughs> at feet so they know what the answer is. <laughs> uh, actually, while they'll do that, I'll go through the spiel one more time. Guys, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. You can take a look at our YouTube archive if you want to catch some earlier stuff. I think we may have actually done a races video before. Mm -hmm. which may be more coherent than this one, but compare the two. Tell us how awful we are compared to the last one or how much better we are. Well, this could be a series of BTRs that we can do with oh, the, yeah, yeah, with no. the different races. So oh, yeah, yeah, no, and I'll be happy to see that. Uh, if you want to talk to us on discord and tell Caitlin why she's wrong about tieflings, you can do that. If you want to actually play in a game, you're, don't have any available this week because we have cred on Thursday, calamity on Saturday, and no one can play unless you're a tri generational Frank on well, Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. yeah. But hit us up on Twitter, and we will see about getting you a place in the one shot next Saturday. Um, if you want to buy cool swag, click on the buttons around here. If you get tired of looking at our awesome faces, make silly noises. Um, if you're wondering, yes, indeed, Caitlin is constipated. Um, but if you're listening to the podcast, you won't be able to actually hear that. You gotta catch us on the Twitch stream. Thanks again to Pirate Dog Dice. Um, 
no, they will not make Caitlin poop dice, but they will make dog poop dice. And that's that's the best thing. <laughs> shame face. I'm going to have to make a Dave of my own shame, <laughs> shame face. There's and so finally, to, thanks to Adventure Sense for keeping us uh, uh, well scented and less smelly than usual. Uh, just <laughs> don't you. snort them. And I think that's just about everything to say. I think I bought I enough time for Scott or Caitlin. Me. I'm going to skip Caitlin because she wants to talk. Scott, what is your various no, human your character? Are... All right, fine. I'll tell you guys after the show. It's pretty intense. Yeah, save it for that. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I'd be a variant uh, human, probably a wizard, and my feet would be Warcaster. That's a that's an very awesome mid max. Yeah, that's Did a very try and go for flavor. I didn't give you guys enough time yeah. to try and flavor something. All right, Caitlin, your variant human character. Go. I don't understand what I'm supposed to What are my feet? <laughs> what are feet? <laughs> and that's it for everybody. We will see you on Thursday at the Cred Campaign. Hopefully, Caitlin has put herself together by hey, then. Uh, otherwise, she's going to be eaten and drowned. Uh, and then check out some awesome Stone Age stuff on Saturday. Guys, everyone wave at the camera. Say goodnight. We love you. Bye.